Freaking what up, dude? Um, it's Carter Wilson, and I'm the host of this podcast that's mine. It's gonna be called History is Night. This is Sparta. Dude, different intro. Sorry to mess around there. You know, in history, sometimes tradition has to be broken, but you know, I am, I think some traditions are beautiful, so I gotta hit us all with a freaking what up, dude? Welcome to the episode of History is Dank. I'm your host, Strider Wilson. We got Aaron going beast mode on the sticks, dude. What's going down, Aaron, dude? What up? Dude, I'm freaking posted. Dude, I'm freaking posted up. Look, dude. Statue of Liberty style, dude. It's me, dude. And the graphic, dude. I posed for that. I posed for that picture. It was painted, dude. Um, and today I'm going to be painting what I think is a truer picture of Sparta. Now, the movie 300, we can all agree those dudes are jacked. That's sick. Looks like Ger- Gerard Butler could crush a walnut between his butt cheeks. Jacked. Me and my boys did the Spartan workout. A lot of my boys dressed up as Spartans to go to the movie. Very sick. I was busy that night. Couldn't do it. I think I was working at Nordstrom back then, dude. Probably maybe I could have even been at Benihana. I can't really remember, dude. Might have been just been freaking slinging those teriyaki steak and chickens, dude. More California rolls, dude. What a little Mai Tai, dude. But, dude, I'm also, and I can't believe it's been this long. Like, we're over 200 episodes in. Maybe I was just saving it where I was like, dude, one day. Maybe I wanted to get more reps, grow myself into this expert, strongest podcaster probably alive. Yeah. Thank you, Aaron. And I wanted to save this subject so I could really give it its full due diligence and honor it. And as we know, the ancient Greeks were big on honor, dude. They invented that. Cheers. Here's to honor, dude. If you can't be honored, be honor. (laughs) That's a classic perverts cheer. And I'll tell you right now, I'm going to go out and say, I think it would be unchill to live in Sparta, dude. I think, and of course, we always do this, you know, my boy Dan Carlin, we're judging this from our 21st century lens. A lot of times, though, Western culture, we look back to the Greeks, you know, the founders of democracy. We, our language is still derived. We still used Greek terms, umbrella, dude. Think about that, dude. Parasol which is a freaking basically a way that, you know, Wednesday Adams would say, you know, bro, it's a parasol. But dude, freaking, we draw so much from the Greeks, their philosophy, their ideas, their form of government, dude, their olive oil, their jacked abs, their jacked calves, tan, wine, legit, boning, sexual. We're going to talk a lot about sexual nature of the ancient Greeks, and especially in Sparta. And I'm going to say... What made me think of it, too, is there's so many, I think right now, and I was talking about this on the episode when Chad and JT joined for Ep2 Hundy, baby, what up, Um, was this alpha males online, and they all are obsessed with being elite and, like, being Spartan, you know, we train, we work out, you know, we cuck, we cuck betas, we make bank, you know, we change our names to, all of our names are Gavin Leatherwood, you know. They re, all these guys are reinventing themselves, dude. Work out, make bank, you'll see boobies every day. You know, I'm like, no. How come, I, I think we need to change this uh, sort of narrative of, of alpha males and just how come we can't get like a soft reinvent all of so Just how come we can't, how come dudes just can't be nicer, maybe a little more Canadian, you know? Just be hockey players, you know? Hey, we're a team. I play for the hockey sports team. I'm a guy who plays on the team. I go, I, I, I in the rink, I let the violence out. Uh, when I'm home from the rink, I'm enjoying, you know, you know, maple syrup on everything, you know. I listen to my wife. We bone, you know. It's a good time. It's a good time, you know. I think that's nice. Rather than doggy style only. Gavin Leatherwood, wake up at 3.30 in the morning, go to bed at 2.30 in the morning, wake up, be elite, call your dad, pin your dad, 
cuck your dad, have sex with your mom. That's what they're doing. Oedipal, dude. They have these men's retreats, which are hilarious, dude. I don't know if you've seen these videos where it's like, it's that AI voice. And this voice comes on. It's like, no women, no distractions, like-minded men working out, eating right, eating clean, in the mountains of Costa Rica, gathering around, thoughtful men, kissing. I'm like, dude. And you know what? They should kiss. That is more Spartan of them to kiss in the mountains, dude. It's great to kiss in the mountains, dude. Kiss your boys in the mountains. That's what you should be doing because here's the thing. I've also been thinking about this. Kids. Aaron, you have a kid. You're a father or a great father. I like to. I, like, I try. You know, you do a great job. And I'll tell you, a lot of my friends are having kids. I get pressure to have kids from the both grandmas. You know, I'm not, not overly do, but, you know, always, hey, what are you guys thinking? You know, stuff like that. Inquiries, I should say, as, as opposed to pressure. But constant inquiries, I should say. But uh, I don't know, dude. Look, my wife, she's a Ferrari, baby. Okay, my dank ass wife, she's a Ferrari. But then also I think that kid's getting a Chrysler engine, okay, if I'm the dad. So I want my kid, and then it made me think of Sparta. I was like, dude, maybe I got to go, if society had the Spartan route, send him to the Spartan school when he's seven, teach him to, you know, capture a wolf, wrestle dorks. But then is he going to be a douche, one of these kids online, like one of these alphas online? I don't know. I think probably better if you're there and then i started looking at this spartan training and by the way the spartan school is called the agoge which i think is that's the, the greek term it's called agoge and honestly <laughs> a lot of those dudes were they would have homosexual relationships that was normal in ancient greece your number one excuse me i should say ancient sparta a lot of greece though a lot of the ancient city states but in sparta very normal there's a theory that on the wedding night, your your number one duty as a Spartan, I should get this out of the way before I get into it, is well, in the in the movie I must say that Gerard Butler makes a crack that the guys from Athens are boy lovers. Yeah, I know, which makes no sense. Yeah. Like um they did have like homophobia in um Sparta where they would say that like, oh, if you played the the female role in sex, it was a little bit like you know, that was okay, you were probably like the more beta, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, you had to do that. And but the Spartans for sure engaged in in uh, homosexual sex at the in the agoge. Literally, the school is called the agoge, spelled A G O G E. And Lycurgus, who we're going to talk about, this guy's a beast. He's the one who founded that system in the ninth century BC. Before that, Spartan wasn't you know top dogs, um, at least when it came to their warrior class. But and that's what they're known for. But fucking. Um, Damn, what was I saying there? I was going to say something sick, dude. Oh, oh, oh. They would, they were definitely, they would shave their heads. The men usually had shaved heads in Sparta. And then on the wedding night, listen to this. This is a, how's this for romantic? It was traditional and, and marriages were generally um, arranged by the men, right? Although women did play the heaviest role and were the most equal of all of the city states in Sparta. Because men were trained in the agoge to be professional soldiers, women did do the went to the agoge as well, but they didn't do military training. They got training in like finance, reading, um, and they basically their duty was to run the house as like a business. Um, and we'll get more into that. But on the wedding night, uh, a lot of the female Spartans would cruise over to the bride to be's house, shave her head give her a bath Whoa. then the dude the husband comes over like stage kidnaps but like to, that's the idea of like oh takes her back to his house um granted he sleeps in the barrack but back to his like family house they bone then he leaves and goes sleeps in the barracks because you always sleep in the barracks you always take meal with whatever class of war you are and we'll get into a few different ones in a little bit here and that's your wedding night and then the theory is they don't know why, but the, they're and they see this on pottery of like the the um, Spartan wedding ceremony of the woman's head being shaved. One of the theories is it'd be easier for that guy um, because he was a uh, only engaged in homosexual sex up until that point in his life. That if the wife's head was shaved, 
you know, be easier transition for him. Oof. So now that's not proven. That's theorized by scholars. But, you know, also it also is single women, you know, that were still um, it was also a signifier of like, oh, I'm married. I wear my head shaved and now um, just easy for people to identify. And then, um, you know, in Spartan society and then the single ladies had long hair, you know, perhaps potential brides to be one indicator there. In any case, the number one goal of a Spartan man or woman was to create strong Spartan children. And this is my point number one of how unchill it would be to live in Sparta if you even got to live in Sparta. Because what they did is they would practice basically um, sort of infanticide. They would once the baby was born, so you have your romantic wedding night, probably, you know, who knows, whatever style you're doing, boning in, in the dark, shaved heads, you know, hopefully it's loving, you know. Um, uh, obviously all consensual, even like Kyrgyz says that, he goes, it has to be consensual. He goes, some some relationships are for, and he loved homosexual relationships in the Agoge because it, it brought dudes together and stronger. You're going to be more likely to defend the dude next to you. Um, you know, if you have a, a physical, strong and spiritual bond, but the main bond was between man and wife and that was to serve. He didn't really actually want it to be too spiritual or soul serving, but he did want it to be connecting and um, bonding. But how can you have one without the other is kind of what some scholars say. It's like it's a little bit uh, hypocritical. But in any case, the man and woman, they create strong, strong Spartan children and you would have this they would do this test, the baby would be born, the higher elders of the Spartan men would inspect the baby. Of course, they wanted a strong man as a soldier, but women also very, very important. They also want a strong woman. Spartan women were strong and badass as well. And uh, they were all athletic. That was like, they really prided themselves on being athletic, uh, both male and female. And uh, they would do this test, bro, where they would put the they put some babies in wine and see if they could swim out. And if they would swim out, they'd be like, okay, this baby's strong. If the baby got confused or lost, granted, this is a baby. So of course it's confused. Yeah. Of course it's confused and lost. A baby that may be drunk. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe had, maybe freaking you know, got, was, uh, you know, offering up to Dionysus a little bit early. Um, but they would, uh, do that test and then, you know, they wouldn't let the baby drown. They would pick it out of the wine vat or whatever the fuck. And then they would take it to this mountain and basically the idea was that um, in, in this baby in nature, if nature wants it because it was born or some nice passerby wants a baby for a farmhand, great, they'll take it or the baby will just die. You know, it was seen as more humane, just leaving it out and about. Other city states did practice this as well, but this was the Spartan way. Um, and the idea was that it's like, oh, um, it's more just, right? So, um, if, if pl the place was called Leshi, is where the, um, the elder tribes officials examined the infant and then left them at the. Um, this is called the apo Apothate, um, a, pl a chasm like place at the foot of Mount Tagius, Tagetus. Saying all that wrong. Okay. Um, so let's get into the exact training that was. Uh, these Spartan men were experiencing and women. But before we do that, you can't have, and I need to make my font a little bit bigger here. You can't have Sparta as we know it without Lycurgus. Okay. So before there was Sparta, there was a ancient tribe there called the Periochioe. Probably saying that way wrong. Okay. And the Helots. Okay. We'll get into Helots. You can't have Sparta without the Helots. That's the slave class of Sparta. Those are the Periochii basically get conquered by Spartans. Okay. Um, in this, on the area, uh, this area of the Peloponnesian Peninsula, ancient Greece. And um, they conquer these people, whatever, they enslave them. And Lycurgus was a prince of Sparta. He played a role in this conquering. His older brother dies, leaving behind a pregnant wife. 
Lycurgus, so this is, you know, this is Shakespearean here. The, the heir to be could be a boy, maybe it's a girl. If it's a girl, kind of crisis avert it. He's going to be the king. But if it's a boy, this is a problem, you know. If Lycurgus was a bad guy, he would probably just murk his brother's wife, right? Murk the baby. And, but like I mentioned, you know, they want strong Spartan babies. You don't murk babies. You wait for those babies to be born in Sparta. And that's Lycurgus is the one who puts that code in there. Um, what he does is he abdicates the throne in favor of his brother's infant son. He goes, later, dude, I'm out. In fact, I'm so out, so you all believe me? I'm going to leave. I'm going to go on a solo boys trip, dude. He cruises to Crete, fucking Asia Minor, dude. Egypt, he learns, he studies, dude. He's studying, he's gathering knowledge and thoughts, dude, being sick. Um, and, he, and he creates his own ideas based on this of what he thinks would be the best society. After a number of years, he's contacted by Sparta. They ask him to return home. Turns out his nephew, his name's Chiralius, dude. Should be freaking Shmolius. Turns out he's not the best king, dude. A um, lot of social untrust, um, you know. And then Lycurgus is like, all right, dude, I'll cruise back. And guys, I got a new concept of law. And he writes it out, okay? He wins the upper class over his vision, and it gets installed. And this is all taking place in the ninth century, okay? Um, he is a beast. He is the one who instills this agoge school and is like look sparta needs to be the most badass state uh city state police if you will polis p-o-l-i-s um that there is okay he's the one who let who you know makes the spartan phalanx they use the hope light which is another police polis i should say um of ancient greece um they started the hope light phalanx the spartan phalanx was the one that nobody in the ancient world wanted a piece of. You know, it's the one that, it's also funny too, and this is, you know, in F. Yertes in the 300, he's the deformed guy who can't hold his shield. Um, it also goes to show, there was also um, writings, Plutarch is where we get a lot of this information from. He writes, there was also a king, I don't remember the name, but of Sparta who had a deformity at one point. So it's like not, so obviously this was sort of a piecemeal approach to this um, method of Leshki or whatever they called it, where they, D deemed every Spartan baby to be absolutely perfect um, because there's instances where there are grown Spartans with deformities where I guess these are described as birth defects though some of it's not like an injury happened or a slice it's like one of the kings like had to have a cane and, and stuff like that so in any case um, the Theban phalanx you know the famous 300 that's why he brings 300 Spartans. That's why, that's what they did. It was the sacred sacred band comprised of 150 pairs of homosexual lovers and soldiers. So I'm saying, dude, gay dudes are the best soldiers in ancient history. If you love the dude next to you, you're going to be, because you, your shield, you know, is is who it protects. And then you strike with your, and the, the sword, the beautiful sword of the Spartan army, um, the Dory. The dory sword of course the hope that you had a spear so you'd poke with the spear but what the spartans did is they were amazing with that that feather shaped sword um and it was a um oh no sorry the dory was the spear my my mistake and then the feather shaped sword that you see that's so famous um it's called the ziphoboi one-handed swords ziphoi X-I-P-H-O-I, -I, okay? Used since the Spartans, since the Bronze Age. They would be so good with it. They'd want to get up close. The Spartans would want to get up close in that phalanx and then, you know, thrust that sword out really close hand-to-hand -hand combat. They were the best with it in the ancient world. Um, and that's where that um, sword came in. Kind of lightweight, good balanced, heavier tip, so better for puncturing. You know, you had, so you had to be, also had to be strong to manipulate it because that weight at the end of it created more momentum for a strike, but you also had to be, be a stronger soldier to wield it properly. Very fucking badass, dude. Very badass, dude. You had to be good at making love, dude. You had to be a gracious lover, dude. Isn't that great? Of, great To be a good warrior, you must be also a good lover in Sparta. I think that should be highlighted. Okay? So... 
Lycurgus is a beast. He's the one who sets this all up in the ninth century. Dude's a beast. Now let's get into exactly what goes on in the military training known as the Agoge for men. So there's like basically three phases, and really it's pretty much lifelong. Okay. Um, some, they would jokingly say, uh, Spartans would look forward to war because, you know, they were all, all Spartan men were professional soldiers, but they would look forward to war because it meant a break from training. Some dude will put that on social media uh, in the lamest post with a lion roaring in the background and then like a beat dropping, <laughs> you know, or a guy who's like, you know, manages a car max where they don't even negotiate, but he's like, I'm going to move 10,000 units this month because a lion looks forward to war just so I can get a break from how hard I train. <laughs> then the bass hits and he's like drawing on a marker being like, we need to move Honda Civics. You know, I'm gonna, it's like, all right, dude. I mean, whatever gets you fired up, I guess, but you don't need to share it. Some things are left best unsaid, I guess. Although I'm obsessed with it. I love it and it inspired this episode, so maybe I should be grateful for it for these Gavin Leatherwoods out there, dude. Um, so your initiation period, or known as PADES, probably saying that wrong, P-A-I-D-E-S. So this is at seven. When the Spartan child is born, deemed healthy, suitable, strong by the Spartan elders, lives with the mother in the mother's home. Of course, the father would be at the barracks, staying at the barracks, taking meals there, and then coming home you know, to bone or do whatever, say what up, but definitely bone because they needed to create children. Boning was big. And uh, the child is raised with the mother until the age of seven, male and female. At that, po at that point, the kids go to the Spartan State School. Basically, Spart like Hergis creates a police state, basically, is what happens. It's basically the, the Spartans, who are heavily outnumbered by the Helots, who I mentioned were conquered earlier, sort of the natives to that area and then enslaved by the Spartans. Probably ratio was 10 to 1. And and Sparta was also different. All the slaves belonged to the state, not the individual. They would be assigned to individuals, but were brought to the state. And then there was, it was pretty draconian, um, the ruling of the Helots. There would be like three beatings per year. Um, and the elders uh, of, in, of Sparta like once, like say, like even if, even with good behavior, even if you were a helot who was like the best uh, slave ever, did everything right, made no mistakes, the law was like, no, you, this guy still needs to get beat three times. And after the um, you know whoever, whatever Spartan soldier or household that that helot was assigned to, then afterwards, you know these some times would be observed beatings, um, and this would happen in the school as well of the Spartan warriors. If they got caught because like stealing was a big thing in the agoge so they would because you wanted to survive it was all about survival in fact they when you go to meal time you would eat in dark a lot of the times that's why i mentioned boning in the dark earlier because it was all about being able to find your way in the dark and navigate and like all so you're basically always training even if you're going to do something regular um so they would, ne would never even light flames or do anything so you would have to go and just figure shit out all on your own, which is pr pretty freaking gnarly and badass, dude. Some of these Gavins just driving around from CarMax with no headlights, you know, reparking cars in their lot and just dinging them because he's like, dude, I need to be able to navigate. Dude, you never know when you're going to be in battle, dude. That's what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the, this ancient Spartan model of the Agoge does not translate to today. Although I do think the, um, you know, the way they embraced homosexual love is something that we could and should embrace today, which I think is nice. In any case, I digress. Um, I'm getting, oh, I'm getting lost in saying these beatings would go down, but you would never, the Spartan elders would never judge the beating when it was happening, even if they thought it was very gnarly. Afterwards, they'd talk, they'd be like, look, dude, you know, Craig, the hell, I, Craig did a pretty good job, dude. You kind of went a little bit, you went a little bit too hard on him, dude. I think you should probably just do like one slug bug, punch in the arm, probably cool. You didn't need to kick him in the nuts 18 times, dude. And then the guy would be like, oh, okay, my bad. Yeah, good call. They'd also do this if you got caught stealing in the Agoge because this was encouraged. Like, you'd steal a fox, you'd hide it, skin it, you know, eat it, whatever. There was also instances, according to Plutarch, where um, if you got caught stealing, it wasn't for the crime of stealing. It was that you got caught, that you were being punished because you got caught. 
so you were weak you made a mistake that was bad then you would get beat and you, then you would experience shame shame was bad dude honor huge shame very bad dude so guys these these kids in training sometimes would rather die out in nature and kids would die in during this training uh because they wouldn't want to get caught stealing or they'd fear it so much that like uh they'd rather just die than face the shame it wasn't even that they feared the beating it's more of like hey they, they, they didn't want to lack honor crazy um they also did learn to read and write despite what i was just saying <laughs> um they would um but really only enough reading and writing so they could learn the ways of the soldier read a map read battle plans they needed to know that type of stuff it wasn't like they were reading um strict um staunch literature um, they were also um, men of few words, which is badass, dude. Very sick, dude. Not talking as much. The podcasts would not be thriving in Sparta. Um, basically, this initiate stage was instilling essential skills, which would make one not only survive, but conquer, dude. Okay? You have to make your own bed, aka meaning not like make your bed, tuck your in your sheets, do the corners, be able to bounce a quarter off that shit. I mean, I'm sure there was all that, but like literally you made a bed, you would go out, get sticks, make your own little bed. Um, okay. They had to break it without using a knife. So figure they had to figure that out. Um, any action or routine that was considered a waste of time was discouraged. This even applied to speaking, like I just said. Um, the term laconic comes from um, expressing few words, comes from laconia. The home of the Spartans. There you go. There's another umbrella, not just another example, not just umbrella, dude. Okay. Um, there was a ter there was a famous story. This is a fun example of this guy Philip of Macedonia, Philip II of Macedonia, and not Alexander's dad. Um, he was threat sending a threat. He said, "If I enter Laconia, meaning Sparta, with my army. If I if I enter Laconia with my army." successfully i will raise sparta to the ground to which the spartans replied if that's badass dude just if you enter successfully dude you ain't getting in here bro okay um you would uh once you get to be 12 you're known as a pedisquai a bigger boy 12 this is the time when you know you're 7 to 12 you're initiate you're learning skills surviving still going out have, have to make your bed navigating in the dark very tough wrestling wolves dude um at this age you were um there was like the society of lovers this is you know it's tough to speak about this in uh our 21st century lens but this is how things went down in ancient sparta dude um the elder of the agoge would observe they'd be like hey this guy's a good skilled warrior i'll take him under my wing um you know there's there's different classes of badass um warriors in here one of the most the highest class is basically you become like kind of like the ss for the helots where you just go around and just beat up find slaves basically police the state um train super hard very badass i forget the i'll i'll find the name for that in a little bit um Plutarch speaking on this uh, relationship of young lovers within the classical model of the Greek city-state. He says, uh, called the Erastes, lover, encourages and nurtures young man, um, the Eromenos, beloved, in the context of the Agoge program. It is thought that this sort of relationship also deepened the bonds between the younger and older students and thought of themselves and were considered by all other of sons of the same father, the state. So, very gnarly. Um, you have immaturity, you have habonetes, okay? This is when you are almost at the age of 18. Um, also, you wouldn't get married later. You would get married later in Sparta when you graduate like 21. Most, you know, ancient city-states, 15, 14. Women really weren't getting married until 18 and, or early 20s, which seems a little more modern, right? Um modern in the sense of how we would do it today i mean even though nowadays we're getting married even later but um 
the uh, there's these guys called the overseers, the patamonomos. They were appointed by the city's ephoros or o- overseers. Sorry, the overseers are called the ephoros. Their elected officials sworn to uphold Sparta's law. Um, they could even challenge a sitting king if he was being a schmoll. Those are the dudes who reached out to Lycurgus in the beginning. Um, they would not intervene. Oh, this is just going on the punishment. I already went over that. That's pretty sick. Um, so once you're in maturity, you then get elected. You get sort of sorted out based on your skill level, maybe who you've bonded with, who's taking you under your li- wing, where you follow, because there is a little bit of class going on there as well within the system. And you'd go to your common tent, your suscania. There, um, you would always take meals together. Um, you have to get elected to one of them. And if you don't, I mean, maybe you're just outcasted, you're gone. Maybe you become a helot, who knows. Once the election to a mess was secured, all the men of that mess ate every meal together. Only excuse uh, for not attendance was a religious ritual or hunting. Um, yeah, so even on the wedding night, like I said, you still eat with your soldiers. You leave, you hook up with your wife, you come back. Um, let's see. You can marry during your this, this stage of the agoge because training is still going on. You don't officially graduate in, uh, until the age of 30, okay? But you could be married before, you could have a family, and then once you're graduated at 30, then you can start living at home and shit. Um, women in Sparta, you know, also very gnarly, dude, okay? You have, um, you have way more rights than other um, city-states like Kyrgyz wanted it this way dude educated at the same level at home um, they basically um, all the menial labor you know you're thinking to yourself like who's cooking like is it alpha to cook in ancient Sparta like do I have to like do the dishes and stuff all the helots did that dude all the bitch work did very very you do not want to be a helot dude I'll tell you that much right now dude and a little spoiler note might be their Sparta's undoing. Um, so the women they were, they took care of. Um, while all the menial labor, menial labor was taken care of by the helots, Spartan women could concentrate on what Lycurgus believed the most important role: motherhood, creating beasts, dude, young beasts, um, and uh. Also running the household, the farm, managing finances, operating basically as a business, like I said. And, you know, while men were frequently out at war, they would, there's that famous line of the 300, like, bring back, bring me back your shield or you on it, you know? And that's like a, a real quote from um, one of the Spartan um, queens did actually say that. I don't know if it was Leonidas's wife, but a lady did say that. Um, let's see. Fucking. Yep, so we went over that already. Pretty badass. Symbolic kidnapping, not chill, dude. So, basically, all through Spartan culture, when you when you're a woman, you have a shaved head. You'd wear your tunic. You'd post up. You'd chill. You'd be running the house. But like I mentioned, there's a little bit of class. Early on in Sparta, silver and gold was outlawed. Later on, though, um, you know, um, iron is the actual currency. Um, so it didn't matter how much, you know, um, silver or gold you had. But um, later on, it became valued as jewelry. So there, it, women could, you know, sort of sport that and look pretty badass. Necklaces, bracelets. Um they cosmetics by Lycurgus. Lycurgus, as ba- much of a badass as it is, probably not a chill dude to hang out with, dude. Probably would be a dude who's like, would invite you on his boat, but the whole time, like you're not allowed to go below deck or like touch anything. Like, he's like a dude who's got a sick house, but he's like, don't touch anything in my house. Like when your friend's house has museum rules, you know, when you go over there, <laughs> you're like, dude, I don't, I don't feel comfortable here. Like you have a pretty chill house, but like we have to watch a movie standing up in a squat position can't even sit on the couch like yeah no you're not allowed to sit on the couch dude it's kind of had that vibe to him 
um, but he outlawed vanity. He didn't like vanity. But later on, you know, ostentation was basically frowned upon, right? He fucking later on was gets you know once he's get murked a few centuries later, dude. You know, ladies are like, all right, dude, we're gonna fucking put on some perfume. We're gonna smell good. We're gonna be beasts. So that's freaking chill. So basically, my takeaway here is, um, you, uh, also women up until the age of seven would wrestle and and until that basically when it became that initiate like after the initiate stage of the agoge men young boys young girls would wrestle each other fight all of this is also pretty much naked um greek the spartans loved being naked dude and getting tanned and uh then you would separate and the women would go home do their training learn the skills that they needed and men would do professional soldier training um it was all about that it was all about focusing on being a soldier women were all about focusing on running the household they were always in a state of constant fear from the helots. One, because they <laughs> had to beat them and treat them like shit. They were also outnumbered. So as a Spartan, you always were looking over your shoulder, always having distrust. But if, you know, there was there were big uprisings that did happen. And um, the fall of Sparta happened um, basically because of that. They kicked out this... Um, I want to get into this before we get the hell out of here. Is... Uh, Basically, this ruler, he comes up with a great idea of how to take down um, the Spartan phalanx. Um, I need to find his name here. He just, doesn't just tickle their toesies. Yeah, you tickle their little toesies because <laughs> <laughs> they're wearing sandals. Yeah. You say, "Let me see, let me see the center of your foot." <laughs> I mean, a flamethrower, they'd be screwed, dude. If you had some good technology, you'd be badass. Grenade. But basically what happens is this dude fucking, um, I want to say marathon, but that's not right. Also Spartan Navy, just to talk on that. They didn't have a big Navy. They lied on their neighbors, the Corinthians for that. Um, they were more about, you know, ground and pound, run the football type stuff. Um, but this Theban um Phalanx. I said hoplite phalanx earlier, but the Theban phalanx was favored by um, uh, the sacred band of 300 soldiers. Um, and, but it's a Theban general. That's where he's from. I forget his name. He's been studying Sparta. You know, you usually have a phalanx of 8 to 12 men deep in the Greek one. This guy puts it 50 deep, pressures a phalanx so hard by going 50 bros deep on one side and then wrapping around with his thin side on the back um, for like a sort of soft flank like um, pincer maneuver that he is able to defeat the Spartan phalanx. He's like the first one to do it in history. He does that, defeats them in the battlefield and then uh, rallies up their helots who hate them um, and basically kicks out the legs from underneath the Spartan city-state that was, you know, all these menial jobs make the society function and if you're not able to do that then you crash so my big takeaway is that for all the alpha males online i appreciate your content i have to say it i've come full circle on that in doing this episode but two don't act like Sparta's chill it's not chill you wouldn't like living there you'd rather post up and game with your boys Pfft. end of sentence dude all right stoked on that stoked on sparta Freaking stay stoked, dude. Keep your head on a swivel, dude. Train, wrestle, be a beast. Um, freaking catch you, bros. Shave your wife's one. head. Shave your wife's head, dude. If anything like that, shave your head, move to Los Feliz, open a coffee shop. The Spartans could have done that in society. That's probably where they'd function now. They'd be great baristas. Jacked baristas with shaved heads. Good call. That's what Spartans would do nowadays. All righty. Freaking stay stoked. Catch you guys on the next one, dude. Let.